I'm gonna start off this video by saying that absolutely nobody is happy with this announcement. Nobody. Not even the people that made it, not even the people behind the scenes, none of the players enjoy any of this. I don't believe I have seen one single positive take about this, the, 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 the state that Hearthstone Esports is going to be going into in 2023. If you guys aren't aware of the announcement that was made, uh, the announcement was finally made on the Hearthstone Esports uh, Twitter, and well, it's, uh, like I said, it's not good. Um, I tried my hardest in order to look on some kind of positive side of this, but from what I can tell, there's going to be less players that are going to be allowed to compete in these tournaments, there's going to be less money available for, for most of these events, and there's just, uh, there's just a lot of what's going on, and my heart goes out to everybody that was expecting Hearthstone Esports to be something I guess in this year because unfortunately there's just not a lot of hope within the community so let's go ahead and talk about what these changes are and what exactly is going on because I have my reaction uh, to the balance patch where we read it uh, live on stream and there's honestly a few things that I got wrong while reading it but I'll still have that at the end of the video so you guys can see kind of like how I tried to be positive and just couldn't at the end of the day but the thing that needs to be said is that the system benefits nobody it benefits 16 people that are going to be able to compete in this tournament. Here's a great tweet from Meaty that actually put things uh, that puts things into great perspective. Unfortunately, there's just the, the, everything about this is absolutely true. And here's just the, you know the TLDR: only 16 people get to play in Hearthstone tournaments every four months. Only eight people get money from Hearthstone tournaments in 2023, and those eight people get a lot of money—500,000 dollars between them. This just doesn't make any sense because one of the biggest criticisms of the Grandmaster system was that it only got to benefit like 64 players, the top 16 players in each in each of the different regions, in APAC, NA, uh, EU, as well as the China scene. And the China uh, merger and acquisition uh, or whatever the, 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 the client uh, issues definitely did have something to play in this, but it's not the main reason why it, it, everything is so negative here. The one thing I don't understand the most is the $500,000 uh, $500, that only goes into Worlds. This is the only money that is being pumped into the uh, into the standard eSports system. There's also, you know, Battlegrounds, but I'm not going to be able to cover Battlegrounds because I'm not familiar with that. So I will just be focusing on standard. But there's only $500,000 that are going to be split between eight people when you eventually go to Worlds. I don't understand how some of this money is not being allocated into the Masters Tour because as you guys, if you guys didn't pick up by now, Masters Tours don't give you money. They just give you slots going into Worlds. Again, check check the, the, the patch notes, check the announcement, so that way you guys are familiar with what's going on. I'm assuming that most people have already read the, the announcement going into this, and again, I have my reaction later on. But just like, there is no money that is going to be possible to earn through Hearthstone Esports until the very end of the year, so how is anybody supposed to justify being able to compete in these tournaments in order to, you know, earn money while doing this? How are teams supposed to be able to invest in this? How is anybody supposed to spend enough time grinding, you know, the time that you need to to get Hearthstone matches under your belt to do well in Worlds, while also not having, I mean, not having a job? Like, there's so much to unpack with all of this to where the current ecosystem that competitive players have is completely just gone. There is no financial incentive anymore unless you are one of the chosen eight people. This is this is just the one thing I just don't understand is why we switched to this system that completely gets rid of every other avenue to success. Open cups aren't going to be a thing anymore. I just, I don't understand who this change is really for. And I just really want to stress that Hearthstone Esports is the reason why I got into Twitch streaming. Hearthstone Esports is the reason why I've made a YouTube channel, it's the reason why I go to tournaments, why I kept playing this game for so long. I even played this game in high school and in college and I'm sticking around because I really do believe in the product that has been, has been pushed out. And one thing that I think that needs to be addressed with this announcement is just how grim everything is sounding in the Q&A section. Like, here's just an example of some of the questions that were made in the Q&A section. So it's just like... How is anybody supposed to feel positive when this is literally the rhetoric that is going on on the official announcement? The announcement should have had none of this negative stuff. Like maybe there's like, you know, you can talk about like the China uh, server and how that kind of, you know, got in, the, got in the way of what's going on in the future tournaments. But it's just like, aside from that, we, did def we definitely did not need to see a question like, why is Hearthstone declining or has it been declining and all of this kind of stuff. This is just going to make people feel even more nervous that you're bringing attention to this because we're all aware that things are on the decline right now. 
everybody is aware of this, and if you've seen stats or seen any uh, of the stream numbers, then everybody, like, everybody that's seen the stream is aware of all this information. So just putting this on the actual page itself and on the actual announcement just set a really bad feeling, and it's just like, it was really hard to look onto this Q&A section and to find something that felt like it was going to give me more hope than it was taking away. I just, I really hate to be a negative nilly about all of this, and I literally just spent the past two hours on stream going through different tweets, going through different takes to figure out what exactly is going on, but, like, the Meat Man got it right. And honestly, the Meat Man has the best take on how to actually, like, fix this. I don't want to, I don't want to just make this video and not suggest at least one sort of fix, although I think there's a lot of things that need to be considered before we, like, come up with, like, an actual, you know, this needs to happen, otherwise this will happen sort of situation. But Meat Man is suggesting that we take about $300,000 from the total prize pool of Worlds and put that into the Masters Tours. I think that is a great start because without having open cups, like, you need, or you need to give people a reason to grind ladder that is more than just, oh yeah, you get to play in a Masters Tour with no prize money, and if you do well in that tournament, then you can earn even more money. Like, you have to go through top 16 ladder, do well in that, qualify with the most amount of points over three months, get invited to a tournament, win that tournament, or do extremely well in that tournament to where you qualify for Worlds before any kind of money can get made. Why? Why is it that difficult? It, there's no reason for it to be that difficult. And unfortunately, like, they heard us when they when they, when we uh, said that we wanted ladder to matter, but with open cups being gone, what about the people that were grinding for packs? What about the people that just wanted to get their feet wet in the esports scene and they just wanted to play a tournament or two? They didn't want to, like, you know, grind out everything. Like, that option is now gone. I just don't understand who this is for, because it's not for professional players, it's not for casual players, and it's not for people that are wanting to potentially get their feet wet within the Hearthstone, e uh, within the Hearthstone esports ecosystem. The thing that just really sucks is that this feels like it's for the top players, but it's not even for the top players because people like Fury Hunter uh, have given their take recently being like, if he doesn't do well uh, in the first Masters Tour, if he even qualifies for it, he's just gonna give up for the rest of the year. And this leads to my biggest worry, and if the first event doesn't do well, it is going to cause a terrible, terrible effect on everything else because it's going to set people's uh, it's going to set people's opinions. Uh, people are going to think, "Oh God, if this is how it starts, then how is it going to end?" And the more people that don't qualify for these tournaments and have less chances of qualifying for Worlds are going to eventually give up because, again, there's no reason to play if you didn't make it to these first couple of tournaments. You need to do insanely well. And in the wise words of former Grandmaster Eddie, "Every single game of Hearthstone is life and death." And now it's even more like this because of these changes. And this just really puts the pressure on Blizzard to make these things into into spectacles. Because I said this on my stream earlier, and I think you'll see these in the clips coming up ahead. I very much stress that these tournaments need to be spectacles. They need to be hyped up. They need to be the most exciting thing that professional players or competitive players can, can literally get excited about. We need this to hit because if it doesn't, it is going to spell a grim future for the uh, for, for Hearthstone Esports to where if this year doesn't go well, there's, cur there's currently no plans for 2024, which is not uncommon for plans not to be, you know, thought out for that far ahead because it's Esports, it's hard to, you know, get funding, it's hard to do all this kind of stuff. But one thing that's really important is if this doesn't do well going into this year and it just keeps going downhill and downhill, we have no other thing to suspect outside of it's just going to end in 2024. And I really hope that is not the case. One thing that I also, I actually will act, I will end this part of the video on is someone brought up crowd uh, crowdsourcing. I don't know why this option was taken away in all honesty. And I know, I know 100%, I would even be willing to do this. And I don't even like crowdfunding in general, but it's just like, I would be willing to pay $10, $15 into a pool so that way people can actually have an actual Hearthstone tournament series and actual esports funding rather than us just being dependent on whatever Blizzard wants to shell our way. We need a way of being able to raise money for these uh, for these events if, if the prize funding is clearly not there. People are willing to do this. I know for a fact that it's worked before in the past, and I'm not sure if there's any legal discrepancies. I think that's the reason why they weren't able to do it again. But again, I'm not I'm not sure on the reason why they stopped. They did it once back, I think, in 2019, and they haven't done it since, and people have been very vocal about how they would be willing to, to you know, fork over a couple bucks in order to help out Blizzard or to help out the esports scene. So it's just like, there are ways to be able to fix this. There are ways of being able to make this season into something that will be... A, re a reconnaissance, or I'm sorry, a, re a renaissance 
of uh, of the Hearthstone esports scenes. Like, then we really need a rebirth here, dude. We really need something, and we either need to go with crowdfunding. We need to allocate these resources to the actual tournament so people have motivation and so teams can invest in their players so they're not just you know playing for nothing like i i really don't know how hearthstone is supposed to be profitable with these announcements and that seems to be everybody's opinion on this so what do you guys think if you're thinking about getting into hearthstone esports i think there's a lot of people that unfortunately are going to be demotivated to where i've even heard someone say they're not going to do content creation that just ordered their pc uh this is higgs hs that said this and i'm actually going to highlight him specifically because um, in my stream today, he was literally talking about how excited he was about streaming and getting into the Hearthstone esports and potentially making his own content. But now he's going to be returning the parts and he's going to maybe even look into getting an actual job instead of streaming for these next couple of months. He literally just, just ended, ended a job to, to do this and everything. I'm, I, personal details aside, it just, he was really excited to do this and now he's not able to and he's literally backtracking because of this announcement. Who knows what this means for other people that were already on the fence and were waiting for this announcement to make their decision. I think a lot of people are going to be quitting Hearthstone Esports after today, and I don't feel happy saying that, and I don't want to say that, but that is just... Look at the ratios on the announcement, and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. People are not happy, and I think this is the worst news that Hearthstone has gotten, I think, ever, in all honesty. But coming up ahead, here's my reaction to the patch notes. We read everything. We read the entire announcement, and I tried to find one little thing of positivity, but unfortunately, it just wasn't there. I will say this right now. I got a little confused on the 500,000. I thought that was going towards Master's Tours, and then when I found out that it wasn't, yeah, that really changed my view on how everything else was going to be laid out. So I really don't know uh, if I can say anything. I really don't know what else to say at this point. I'm just, I'm extremely disappointed. I'm extremely let down, and I'm just, I'm not sure if I'm going to be competing at Hearthstone Esports in the future. And this is coming from the person that has quite literally tried to do only Hearthstone Esports while, while playing this game for so long. So, if there's anyone from Blizzard that's watching this, I mean no disrespect. I'm sorry if this came off the wrong way, but unfortunately the motivation just isn't there right now. And this, this announcement didn't just hit me this hard, it's hit everybody this hard. So, hopefully some kind of changes will be made. Hopefully there's something that we can look forward to with Hearthstone Esports that isn't just making it to Worlds. And I guess, thank you guys for watching this video because this was kind of hard for me to put together. I'm really trying not to be a negative Nelly, but there's literally no good news from this announcement outside of the eight people that will qualify for Worlds. Thank you so much for watching this video. I wish I had better news to report, and we'll see you for the next video. All right. It's the worst possible scenario? No, don't give me that going into it. Oh, no. What are you talking about? It's the worst possible scenario. All right. We're, we're reading through all of this. For love of God, please give me motivation to play this game. I don't want to just make content. I want to play competitive Hearthstone. Okay. Are you ready for the 10th year of competitive Hearthstone? Definitely doesn't feel like that. This year is going to look a bit different from the previous uh, few. So let's get into what's coming into Hearthstone Esports. Ending in the 2023 season, we have been evaluating the state of the competitive program and the best format to, uh, to take it moving forward. Last fall, we began talking about uh, setting up Hearthstone Esports for sustainability as it turns a decade old, balancing the realities of an ever-changing production landscape, sizing the program according to its audience, and finding the most uh, direct path for the players to compete. Okay, where is this going? This All good, let's hope this delivers. Even though the 2023 program is smaller, this year is poised to bring uh, another exciting year of competitive Hearthstone with players from across the globe showcasing their skills to earn prizing and join the Hall of Champions. Cool, cool, cool. Well, look, competitive points. Good to know. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. But let's go, man. Let, we, I really want some. I really want some good stuff here. I really want some good stuff here. This year we will see a total of seven events. Three Masters Tour uh, Seasonal Championships lead into the 2023 uh, World Championship, as well as a standalone Battlegrounds Lobby Legends tournaments, all broadcast on YouTube and on Twitch. All right, cool. Great. Viewership is hopefully going to go up because of this. This was important. What else is going on? Where's the bad news, Rami? Qualifying for each event will take uh, through the respective ladders across the three-month seasons. Oh, so we're back to competing over many months now. So each qualifying event will take place over the respective ladders of across three months se uh, seasons. Each Masters Tour and Lobby Legends will feature uh, 16 of the top Legend uh, ladder players based on the competitive points earned through each month's standings. We need to get top 16 points each Masters Tour. Wait, for the three month period? Okay, each Masters Tour and Lobby Legend will feature 16 of the top Legend players based on the competitive uh, points 
Earn through each monthly standing. Okay, through each monthly. So this will happen each three months. Or each of the three months. Okay, well, I, that is pretty difficult. The, uh, the top four point owners of each region will receive invites, followed by the top four uh, point owners, regardless of that region, have not uh, received an invite yet. So rank one, eight points. Okay, so this is pretty much... Uh, okay, I see where it's bad now. It's because, like, if... Damn, dude, if you don't get at least, like, top 20... It's gonna be really difficult to get top 16 point earner. Like, you need to at least get one top 20 finish. And if you don't hit a top 100 finish, then it's just gonna feel bad. Like, remember when they made this, like, to, like, 1,000? So that way, like, top 100 was still, like, good? But now, like, top 100 really doesn't mean anything. 50 through 100 is just... I mean, that, that's, like... That is a lot of grinding to get to top 50. That... I don't, I don't know how I feel about this. I mean, it is close to HCT, but at the same time, the ranks are 1 through 100. Maybe they could have, I don't know. Let, let's keep reading before I start getting too nitpicky. So yeah, January through March, which means if I don't qualify, uh, if I don't do well this season, that's going to be hard to justify for the rest of the month. No money for 99% of competitive players. I mean, what else is new though? MTs have basically replaced uh, GM and old Masters Tour got killed. I mean, yeah, like uh, there's there's less Masters Tours now. I guess that's something to point out. There's, there's six events, but there's only three Masters Tours followed by Worlds. So like the turn okay so here's something I'm worried about here's something that is kind of concerning I think the 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 idea of this is to put on bigger spectacles to put, to gain more viewership we have these bigger spectacles for these tournaments so that way qualifying to them is a bigger deal right but there's also like the th like they're also trying to make sure that they don't have so many events to where people like like last year I could barely make any of the events and I never knew the schedule they'll definitely have open cups probably there has to be a way to, to qualify to these that aren't just ladder. And if there's no reason, if the, and if it's ju just ladder, then I, I don't know how, how I feel about that. But, like, they're literally trying to do less Masters Tours for bigger spectacles, and they're trying to hopefully put more money on the line for these. I haven't seen the prize printing, oh, the prize pool yet, but okay, so let's let's keep reading. As standalone events, each Battleground Lobby's Legend will have 50,000. Okay, that's, that's Lobby Legends. Standard players will be competing for one of eight spots in the World Championship, and it's total prize of uh, $500,000. Okay, that's pretty substantial. De again, depending on how exactly they split this up. Seasonal Championships will reward their invites. Uh, their Championships will, uh, who will be uh, joined by the top point earners for January through November, with the top earner of each region receiving an invite, as well as the top two point earners uh, regardless of region. So we'll have more details on the final events and how to watch the upcoming months, including how to earn drops while watching. FAQ, will there be drops? Okay, don't care about that. Yeah, there will always be drops. Uh, will there be regionalized broadcasts? Uh, currently, there are no plans to produce regionalized broadcasts. Wait, really? Wait, isn't that kind of a problem? Isn't that the whole reason why we have regionalized broadcasts? So that way people that don't speak English or don't speak uh, whatever language that this, the broadcast is being... I mean, I guess there's always, you know, you can always have translators. You can always have people that broadcast it. There'll be people that do this regardless if Blizzard does it themselves. How come there are only three battleground or battleground tournaments? We want to focus on one main Battlegrounds event per expansion. That seems about right. How come the three Masters Tour events don't have any prize pools? Wait, they don't have prize pools. Wait, did I miss this? So only the NA casters keep their job? Yeah, that is also kind of... I don't want to say they're cutting back, but that's kind of a cutback move, right? With players having direct qualification path to world championships by ladder, you want to prioritize rewarding the most consistent players over the course of the whole year. Wait, so these Masters Tours events don't have money on the line? It's just literally for points to qualify? So it's just a tournament for another tournament? Duh! Okay, no! Why? No! Why? Why is this? Dude, no, 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 no! Why is this on here? Why? You don't... You don't put this on here! Oh god, I don't even care what the answer is. You don't put this question on here. The current scope of Hearthstone Esports is separate from the success of Hearthstone. We are thrilled with the upcoming content plans of the game and can't wait for players to see what is being worked on in the years to come. I mean, they are aware, but dude, you don't make us this aware. This mean, like, this means that they're scared, I would say. You would only put this on here because you're scared that people think that the game is failing. Th this is like that Dave Chappelle skit where he's talking about, like, Donald Trump being like, you guys don't know about the briefings that I see. Y'all, you... And it's, like he pretty much uses this uh, this example of like a kid talking or like a parent talking to their kid, being like, "Hey, little buddy, I am behind on the rent. I'm like three months behind. I am worrying. All right, now go off to school. Go." This is literally like, "Hey, we know that you're worried about the game, but keep playing." I would I, if they just could have deleted this, I would have been I, I would feel so much better. 
but this by itself is concerning to me. The answer should have been yeah. I mean, the answer the answer is never going to be yes on their part. It is true that Hearthstone is declining. Is it failing? I don't think so. But you cannot deny that it is not decline that that that, that it's that it. You cannot deny that it's not declining. Sorry, the double negative is screwing me over there. You 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 have to admit that Hearthstone has been declining in the past years. Cause Matt, cause people didn't care about GM. GM GMs didn't care about GM. Okay, well there'll be third party events uh, for the Masters Tour. There'll be wait. While there'll be no third party invites this year, information on hosting community events can be found out in the community. Wait, so are there not open cups? Can I co-stream and rebroadcast? Yeah, they'll, they'll 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 they'll. I don't care about that. Does this mean HS Esports is being canceled in 2014? We don't have anything to share on the 2024 program at this time. I mean, was this even necessary? I don't think this was necessary. Dude, this this is this the tone of this is concerning. I don't know about you guys, but I am worried about the tone of this. And I and I and I didn't want to be let down. I I even though Rami was like bad news, I'm like no no like I I gotta read this and find out. They're not killing themselves. I wouldn't go that far. Wait, hold on, what? Is this because of low viewership or be- okay, Dude, again with these questions- Oh my god, uh, These FAQ- I don't- I understand the point of these FAQs, but come on, dude. The tone of this is just not what- Oh my god. This is supposed to bring hope, and you're not bringing hope with these questions. Is this because of low viewership from being exclusive to YouTube for the past three years? Our goal is to balance the cost of running esports productions while taking into account the size of the competitive community. Balance the cost of running esports production will take into account the size of the competitive community. This doesn't say anything. This literally says nothing. You could have changed this question to like, what is the goal of 2023's Hearthstone esports? And this could have been that answer. There was no reason to have this. You literally, this, this question just needed to be, what is the goal of 2023 esports and the future of Hearthstone? And the, and the future of Hearthstone production. That would have been the answer to this. I don't know. Sa the same point as as this question from before. Because this is on here, I'm worried about what's 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 being talked about. Because now, like, if they don't succeed this year, it's very concerning. This is the oh my god! I did not want these thoughts. I did not want. To, I did not want to be so negative about this. But I'm kind of being a negative Nelly about this. I I want I want to be transparent that I'm probably gonna try and compete with this no matter what because I want to be a part of this. But dude, this is this is this is worrying me a little bit. Now that Hearthstone esports can be on Twitch. Why not increase funding to bring players back? And that's kind of a legitimate question. Uh, we're excited for the Masters Tour to be on Twitch after three years, and we are eager to see what our audience is like there. The new program is sized for, uh, is, is size for sustainability, such as Hearthstone Esports turns 10. Thank God I didn't spend money on this game. I mean, if you're a competitive player, then yeah, good. It's a good thing you didn't do that. But if you're a casual player, it's just however much you want to enjoy the game. I would never look at the esports system as like, oh god, thank god I didn't invest in it. Is the prize pool reduction because of the loss of NetEase as a China publisher? No. Okay, that's good. We began evaluating the size of the program before we understood uh, we weren't going to be able to reach an agreement with NetEase. As we've shared, we are committed to the Chinese players and are actively exploring alternatives to bring our game back to China in the future. Can players residing in mainland China compete? Players residing in mainland China will not be eligible to compete. Eligibility may be evaluated in the event that a new publisher partnership is established in mainland China. Full eligibility uh, inf information can be found in the Masters Tour, Lobby Legends, and Lobby Legend rules. Okay, that is the entire article. So yeah, little little concerning that these events don't have money. Apparently no China, no. And not until they get a new publisher. Does this mean that Hearthstone is dead? No, not by any means. I don't, esports is, Hearthstone esports always has the chance to go away, but Hearthstone itself is not going anywhere, but it is very, I'm, I'm not, dude, this, this article has more FAQ information than it does, like, anything else, or at least this seems to be the main part of it, like, maybe we could count the words, but it's just like, I don't know, dude, I don't know how I feel about this, I don't know if this makes me want to compete, like, I know that I'm still, gr I'm still grinding for top 100 right now, but it seems to be that if you don't get, like, top 20 at least once in a, a three-month period, followed by at least, like, top 40 finishes, it's gonna be really difficult to get top 16 point earner. Yeah, I am- I am worried. I'm actually very worried about these- about these announcements. It sounds like they're pinning a lot uh, on how it performs this season, and that is exactly- okay, the Dayflower, thank you for saying that, because that is exactly what I have been worried about. Because, like, the, the tone of this article 
is so doom. It, it, it's so doomy. Like, insert the doom song from Invader Zim, dude. Like, this is, this is not bringing hope. This is, this, like, the tone of this article is, like, if things don't go well this year, there's not gonna be another year. And, like, you know, regardless of whatever this question is, like, they're not gonna tell us if anything bad is going on, but they also like, are just trying to get through this year before they think about the next year. But, like, I will admit, the one thing that I, I, I think will be the, uh, you know, the, the silver lining on all of this is that if these events do well, if these events do well, it's gonna be fantastic. Like, the spectacle needs to be there. We need this to be a spectacle again. You need to advertise this. You need to... You need to, to do everything... Like, like, do everything possible and do all of the behind-the-scenes work to make sure that this gets viewership. Dude, isn't just triple top 10 at least? Yeah, I... I it, depending on how competitive some people get, like... I mean, there's always, like, you know, there could be, like, different people that get the top 20. Hopefully, it's not just the same 20 people shuffling for the same points. But at the same time, it could become that. It could become that very quickly. I I have to. Uh, we'll, we'll end we'll end this conversation with this last point. They are pitting a lot on this first tournament. Like the success of this of these first two tournaments is just like, like, like this one is going to be more important than the second one. The second one, depending on how bad or how good the first one is, will you know, will dictate the trajectory. But like this first tournament, there is so much riding on this. This needs to be a spectacle, and people need to be excited about this. Right now, I am more worried than excited, which means if I don't get a decent rank at a certain time at the end of the month, then I just have to give up. And if I don't get at least like, like if I don't get any, if I don't get top 100 in the first month, and if I don't get anything in the second month, there's no reason to compete in the third month. That, the old system didn't have that kind of weakness because there were more Masters Tours. But because there were more Masters Tours, there were less viewers, and there was also less of a spectacle Maybe you can talk about prize pools. I, I need to reevaluate the prize pools because I'm still kind of confused on how they're explaining it here. Because I'm seeing 500,000 in total prize pool. But I guess that's just for the World Championship. And that's it. So this is for the World Championship. This is not for Masters Tours. So Masters Tours gets you to this, which can get you this. Yeah, if that's the case, then my god, that is not... Uh, I don't know how I feel about that. Masters Tours need a little bit of money, right? If there's absolutely no prize pool, which they seem to be admitting, uh, right, right here. I don't know, dude. Like, this is, this is pitting a lot. There, there is a lot of sunk cost in this, uh, in this announcement. There's no prize pools for Master's Tour. And you have to grind the entire year to make worlds, which is exactly what it's supposed to be. But if you're grinding the entire year without any aid or without any support... Like, you quite literally can't do this unless you have the funds. I don't know. I, th I think that's all the points that I can make about this. But this is very concerning. This is actually very concerning about... I, I, the, the tone of this article is what scares me the most.